In this programme, we're looking at the worst jobs in the thousand years up to 1066. Some were hard. Some were messy. Others were just frightening. Oh, Jesus Christ! Written history began when the Romans invaded. And they brought some horrible jobs with them. Now, we know what the Romans gave to us, all those lovely straight roads and measurements like the mile and the calendar, but it wasn't all one way. They wanted something from us. Gold. Gold was very important to the Romans. They used it as a status symbol, and we had it here in southwest Wales. The Romans sought it out deep underground, but getting it out was one of the worst jobs in the Roman Empire. The Romans had plenty of rotten jobs, most of them done by slaves, but for me, the worst of them all was working in the gold mines. Even Pliny the Elder, who had slaves of his own, was shocked at the conditions. It was so bad that working in the mines was used as a means of punishment. The local population in Wales was plundered for healthy people to dig out the gold. Welcome to the worst job of Roman gold miner. The gold has come from the centre of the earth. It's been erupted through volcanoes, etc., millions of years ago, and due to uh, the movement of the earth and plate tectonics, it comes out in this higgledy-piggledy manner. You've just got to keep on digging it, and it might take you up, it might take you down. So do you have to chase these things? You'd have to chase it, basically, at any point it could open up to a bigger vein. So you'd have to keep on chasing it down and down until you know you've come to the end. How do you get the stuff out? You use a pick. Well, it'd be pretty difficult to swing a pick in here, wouldn't it? It's a small pick. I hadn't realised you meant a pick quite as small as this one. How do you use it? You just chip away. You, you can see you've got a quartz vein there. Yeah. So you've got to try and chip away at that uh, to expose the quartz and actually to get it out. Just chip away at the ordinary rock and... That's right. I hope that quartz comes away. Oh, it is peeling off a bit, isn't it? It is, yes. What do you think the conditions would have been like? Uh, pretty horrible. You can imagine in, in the summer it would be very hot, lots of men working here, um, they would have had candles, they would have had small little lamps that they would have used, um, but the rest of the mine would have been obviously totally uh, pitch black. So in the summertime, very warm, in the winter, very cold, it would have been colder down here than outside. So you can imagine you've got the, the worst of both worlds then really. In some ways it's an easier job than I thought it would be because this rock fractures so easily, but on the other hand, it gets in your eyes, lucky you're wearing glasses, and then up your nose all the time. And it's not actually the nicest job in the world. I should think half of them, oh, I've got a bit of quartz there. Half of them would have been blind by the time they'd been doing it for a year or so. In fact, many of them died before they had the chance to go blind because the Romans were impatient and were always coming up with more efficient ways of doing things. Getting through lots of rock quickly was a priority, so they came up with fire setting, a process of smashing rocks on an industrial scale. The cost in lives didn't matter. Workers' lives were cheap. And if you look at this area here, if you can imagine, what you would have done is built up this area full of timber, uh, branches, logs, etc., and set it alight. You would have kept that going then for maybe three or four days. God, so it could have been smoky in here, wouldn't it? Exactly. You would have had a lot of smoke. It would have been an intense heat here as well. Also, parts of the rock would have started to break and shatter at that point. But after then a few days, you'd throw water on it, buckets of water, and that would cause a bit like a mini explosion. The whole face there would, would crack and shatter. So it would be an incredibly boring job, a very smoky job, and then a very dangerous job. Exactly, but it, it would show you where the seam is going then. Once it's all shattered, you get a, a pile of rock, just like we got here. The problem then is that you're left with large quantities of rock to carry out. It takes this lot, ten truckloads, to get one load of quartz out. Within this much quartz, there's maybe a piece of gold the size of half a cube of sugar. In Roman times, it all came out by hand. Hundreds of men would have been doing this. 
bent double, carrying big heavy loads day in, day out. And if the weight wasn't bad enough, there was always the danger of falling rocks. Well, it's fine when the tunnels are wide, but when you get to about here, they're carrying this weight and having to duck down too. To make emperors like Nero rich took the lives of hundreds, if not thousands, of early Welsh miners. People who were forced to work in the most horrible, dark and dangerous conditions. Life was hard for the first 400 years of British history, but at least when the Romans were gold mining, something beautiful came out at the end of it. For the Saxons who followed them, though, things were pretty bleak. Look at the materials I'm going to have to be handling to break into the Saxon building trade. The Romans brought a sense of order with them. They were very civilised. They built streets with houses and workshops in neat straight lines. Then they left. And what did we do? We went back to this. When the Romans left, we went back to living in mud huts in higgledy-piggledy streets. This was how most of the country lived until the middle of the Middle Ages. Despite all that, the people who lived here after the Romans left were part of a very highly structured society. At the top were the local kings, below them were various kinds of noblemen, all of whom were warriors, so basically their job was to fight, and below them was everybody else doing the ordinary jobs. At the bottom of the pile, propping up everyone else, was the Saxon peasant, the churl. He didn't get paid, he had a few acres of land, and his job was simply to keep himself and his family alive. He needed to be a jack of all trades. He was a farmer, a builder, he had to do his own baking, he was a woodsman, and he also had civic services to perform. People, of course, lived off the land, which meant that they had to work it, which brings us to a very difficult and back-breaking job. Would they have had to do very much ploughing? Ploughing was quite literally a matter of life and death. If you didn't work the land, if you didn't have uh, plough your fields and plant your crops, you wouldn't have food on the table. So ploughing was important to everybody right through society. Why? Did they use oxen and not horses? Yeah, cattle are much stronger than horses. They're beefier. They can wade through the kind of soil that we're working on here. Horses were much rarer in the Anglo-Saxon period. They, there were horses, but they tended to be grander animals, so they were the kind of things that higher, uh, more important people in society would own. The word acre is an old Saxon word. It was the amount of land one could expect to plough in a day. It wouldn't have looked as sophisticated as this, though. Their ploughs weren't made of metal. That does make a difference. Or so I'd like to think. Let's have a look at the plough itself. It's fairly rudimentary. Yes, but it does the job. Now, what you've got to do is stand at the back and get a good grip either side on the handle here. OK. OK. How do I dig it in? You've just got to lean a little bit of weight on it as you go along. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. OK. How do I make them go? When you want them to, to move forward, yeah. you're going to say, walk on. Yeah. It's Edwin and Oswin. So if you call their names first of all, yeah. they'll wake up and they'll go, aha, Edwin 